digestion, mastication with the chewing, and you have release of amylase and lipase from the salivary glands that chemically react on the food. So you eat that bite of pizza, it starts breaking down into carbohydrates and fats. It becomes a bolus, you swallow it down your esophagus. You have a cardioesophageal sphincter, first of five sphincters in the digestive tract. And all sphincters are just flaps that close, okay? When this doesn't close properly, what do you have? Heartburn. <laughs> Right? Severe heartburn, gastric reflux, yeah. or GERD is the proper name. Oh, that sounds wrong. Gastroesophageal reflux disease. But the gastric reflux is what usually the doctors call it. That's they're trying to impress you, right? <laughs> oh, you have GERD. This valve doesn't seat properly, so you have stomach acid splashing up in the esophagus. Oh, and awful. it can actually burn mm -hmm. the esophagus. We need to take a little purple pill, right? Mm -hmm. Isn't it if you eat peppermint that also flares it up? If you have could, there are certain really? things. Uh, any kind of acidic food, high in acid, citrus fruit, tomatoes, you know, yeah. a lot of times irritate it. Sometimes other foods, food you wouldn't think, lettuce irritates my wife's. Really? Yeah. Yeah. The only thing that gives me heartburn found so far. Tequila? It's wild cherry Pepsi. <laughs> wild cherry Pepsi. He said tequila. Only. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Only That's good, man. That's good. <laughs> okay. And so I love wild cherry Pepsi. <laughs> Don't drink it. <laughs> Cardioesophageal sphincter would go through the stomach. The stomach mechanically churns and mixes with gastric juice. So you have mechanical and chemical digestion taking place in the stomach. It takes about four hours from mouth to duodenum. So if you get sick within four hours of eating something, it's probably food poisoning. After four hours, you just got a bug. Probably your wait staff didn't wash their hands when they went to the bathroom and got some kind of fecal matter on your plate. Uh, yeah. E. coli. E. coli, but it's not food poisoning, they just didn't wash their hands, right? So, after four hours, you say it's not food poisoning? Right. So, if it doesn't happen, with, so when people... They say, oh, good food yeah. poisoning. Well, how long did it happen? How long after you okay. ate? Okay. And you know food poison, I mean, it's instantaneous. Yeah, really? Really? Uh, okay. As soon as it hits the stomach, you're yeah. sick. Really? Violently ill. Projectile vomiting kind of stuff. Really? Yeah. And diarrhea. Why is it? What's in your stomach that does that? Well, it's a bug getting there and reacting, you know, and that acid's it's oh, eating up the food, okay. and that bug's just, you know, it's already starting to cause convulsions of the stomach. You're trying to get it out of you, okay? If it's just a bug, then it's, you know, going to react down a little lower, okay? So we've got the stomach, we've got the churning. Gastric juice is hydrochloric acid and pepsin, which breaks down proteins. So proteins, carbohydrates, and fats if you chew your food. Most of us, a couple bites, swallow it, right? So not much is happening here. But when it gets to your stomach, proteins start breaking down. Once it leaves the stomach and enters the duodenum, then the pancreas is releasing lipase and amylase also. So you start having breakdown of carbohydrates and fats further in the duodenum. Then as it passes through the small intestine, it starts absorbing back into the bloodstream. Till so you get to the colon, what gets absorbed in the colon? Water. 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 If you absorb too much water in the colon, what happens? Constipation. If you don't absorb enough, diarrhea. It's passing through too quick. You're not pulling that water out. Diarrhea, right? So we're in the stomach. We leave through the second sphincter, which is the pyloric sphincter, into the duodenum, okay? And we go through the jejunum into the ileum. Ileum into the cecum, you have the ileocecal valve, third sphincter. Cecum is the first part of our colon or large intestine. The appendix comes off the cecum. And you 
have ascending colon, transverse colon, descending colon, sigmoid colon, rectum, internal anal sphincter, external anal sphincter, anus.